Hello everybody. Um, so I wanted to do some videos for Comic Fest with Phantom Correspondence and I decided to do some tier lists for some superhero stuff uh, because what's more comic book fest than arguing about what superhero stuff is better than other super, superhero stuff. Um, so we're doing a tier list today. I decided to go with what I know best which is Spider-Man. So we got all the Spider-Man feature films um, down here. If you've ever seen how a tier list works, um, it's basically trying to rank things within a category. So the category being um, feature length Spider-Man films. And um, S is the top tier, uh, meaning it's the best of the best. Um, and then it um, descends in quality from there. And then if you have two things in the same tier, so let's say I put the first two Spider-Man movies in S tier, which I'm probably not going to do, but we'll get to that. Um, it can be read um, in an order from left to right. So um, the leftmost entry being um, the best, um, followed by the second most entry, and so on and so forth. Uh, but we're going to put these down here, though, real quick. Um, just a reminder, um, if you enjoy this kind of stuff, um, then be sure to check out um, Phantom Correspondence. Uh, for other YouTube stuff, we stream on Twitch, we do all kinds of fun stuff, so make sure to check us out. But let's get into it. Um, so... We're doing tier list, all of these Spider-Man movies. We've got Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3 from Sam Raimi. We've got Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2 from Mark Webb. And we got um, the MCU films Homecoming and Far From Home, as well as the excellent animated film uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Um, so let's go into it. I'm going to go just kind of from left to right in release order. Um, let's just, let's, well, hold on, let's just get that out of the way. Um, so let's just go for it. Um, Spider-Man 1. Um, Spider-Man 1, probably my favorite pre-MCU comic book movie, um, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, it was revolutionary. Uh, we probably wouldn't have any of the superhero stuff um, in the entertainment world that we have today if we didn't have Spider-Man 1. Um, it also has the lovely performance by the legend uh, William Defoe as Norman Osborn. Uh, one of my favorite comic book villains. Um, I mean, I mean, I'll be honest, y'all. I'm gonna have to go S tier for Spider-Man One. Um, if you got a movie with uh, Willem Dafoe uh, pointing wrist blasters at you, saying "Sleep" just in your face, then that's. I mean, that's S tier. I mean, I mean, I watched The Lighthouse. I think we all did. That was the only thing that that particular film. Uh, didn't have um, and I mean that in quite the literal sense that was the only thing that movie did not have um, so let's go Spider-Man 2 is up next um, Spider-Man 2 is a tricky one y'all Spider-Man 2 a lot of people's um, ideal version of a superhero movie um, and of course it is great a lot of nostalgia attached there but I'll be honest y'all Spider-Man 2 not my favorite Spider-Man movie um, there's a lot of problems with Spider-Man 2. It's things that really plague the Sam Raimi films in general, especially uh, having to look back on what we've gotten since then. I mean, we talk about uh, the treatment of different characters, how accurate they might be to their comic book counterparts. We got, you know, uh, Dr. Octopus um, just not being Dr. Octopus at all. It's a wonderful performance, wonderful character. Um, but, I mean, hey, hashtag not my auto. <laughs> am, I, am I right? That's a, that's a fun thing that people, <clears throat> people are saying. Um, I'm going to go B. I'm going to go B tier with Spider-Man 2. I know that'll be a hot take for a lot of people. But, I mean, you got the weird, um, inaccurate auto Octavia stuff. You got Kirsten Dunst, bless her heart, just being as wooden as possible. I think she was trying to nail down the Marie Antoinette character while she was filming this because good lord, just no chemistry there at all. Just weird stuff. Also, I'm not a huge fan of the um, Spider-Man No More kind of storyline and that's kind of recreated in this one. Um, no movie came out after that one until Amazing Spider-Man 1, so let's just jump right to it. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 1. Um, uh, the first Amazing Spider-Man wins the honor of me um, having seen it in theaters, opening night, midnight showing. Um, last movie I really did that with, um, checking all the boxes there. 
Um, there's a soft spot in my heart for Amazing Spider-Man 1. I think in hindsight, um, it's not as strong as I initially enjoyed it. Uh, probably has a lot more flaws um, in retrospect, but still pretty solid. Um, I'm going to put it in B tier as well, and I'm going to put it right there beside um, Spider-Man 2, if I'm being honest with it. Um, I love Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. love Gwen Stacy uh, with Emma Stone in there. Um... Of Dr. Connor's performance as the lizard, even though it was a fine performance, uh, I always thought that was kind of an interesting pick for um, an origin villain. Um, but yeah. Um, Amazing Spider-Man 2. Okay. People crap all over the Amazing Spider-Man 2, but I love this movie. <laughs> I love Amazing Spider-Man 2. Sure, you got the weird kind of Jamie Foxx performance as Electro, um, that's kind of odd. A lot of people are going to call me a hypocrite for enjoying that and not enjoying um, Otto Octavius and Spider-Man 2. But um, I really love Amazing Spider-Man 2. I think it has some of the most human um, scenes in all of superhero movies. I think um, the clock tower scene is one of the most beautiful, most powerful scenes we've ever had in a superhero movie in general. Um you know, you got weird goblin stuff disease going on. That's always fun. Uh, so I'm going to be, again, I'm going to be a little bit controversial here. I'm going to put, I'm going to put Amazing Spider-Man 2 into the A tier because I really enjoy that one. Um, and you know what? I'm being unfair to Spider-Man 3. I realize now that I'm being really unfair. I'm buying into the memes, you know, um, so... So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna fix this. I'm gonna fix this, y'all. I'm gonna make this right. Um, and I'm just gonna I'm just going to um, do this and just kind of um, do that right there. Um, there we go. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Alrighty, cool. Um, yeah, that looks way better. Okay, so moving right along, we're getting into the MCU f stuff now. MCU, y'all, we got um, Spider-Man Homecoming. Um, Spider-Man Homecoming is great. I mean, well, what is there to say about Spider-Man Homecoming? Um, has Keaton as a vulture. Um, probably, I mean, Keaton as a vulture, probably the best um, depiction of a street-level Marvel Super villain, um, probably other than Wilson Fisk in the Daredevil TV show. Um, I mean, that's I mean, that's just being real with you. Um, I love my street level stuff. I love street level scale for Spider-Man stuff in general. Um, Homecoming is going, it's going to the top, baby. It's going to the top. It's going to supplant um, Sam Raimi Spider-Man One as the as the lead film right here. Um, however, Homecoming, don't get too comfortable, baby. Because into the Spider Verse just just coming for your neck, because good lord is into the Spider Verse amazing. <laughs> um, I mean, I've watched Into the Spider Verse probably over ten times, um, if not over twenty times. I love the movie. Soundtrack is amazing. It always makes me shed a very manly tear um, every time I watch it. Um, I definitely cry a little bit. Um, yeah, let's go into the top two. And again, Homecoming. Your reign was very shortly lived. Um, all right. Far From Home. Now, I don't want anyone to get confused. I think Far From Home is great. I had a blast with it. Um, I mean, Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio uh, made Mysterio the coolest he's ever been, to be honest. Uh, with the exception of possibly his boss fight in a um, PlayStation 2, Spider-Man 2. Um, wonderful. I'm not talking about the weird, mysterious uh, one with all the crazy um, special effects and all that. I mean the one at the gas station. Um, the real OGs will know what I'm talking about there. But um, Far From Home, I like Far From Home. It's great. has a lot of great Spider-Man stuff. Uh, a lot of great performances all around. Um, it's capstone to... Um, Phase three of the MCU. The one thing that holds it back for me is that I don't like the scale of it. I think the scale is a little bit too big for a solo Spider-Man adventure. Um, of course, that being said, Spider-Man 3 is coming out. Apparently, every one of their grandmother isn't in that. 
because it's just pulling in Spider Verse stuff all over all over the place. So that'll be interesting to see. But just because of the scale and because of personal preference, um, I'm I'm gonna actually put Far From Home in the A tier. Uh, we're doing that. Um, actually, yeah, I like it there. I like it just one slot behind Amazing Spider-Man 2. I know that'll make people lose their minds because everybody hates Spider-Man 2 for some reason. But I think I think I'm going to I think I'll go with that. And I'm sorry. Um y'all, I know there are people out there who love Spider-Man 3 for some reason. It's that revisionist history stuff that takes place same as the Star Wars prequels. People just love those now being unfair jokes over i'm sorry everybody i'm sorry okay i'm gonna I'm gonna treat spider-man 3 right i'm gonna promise i'm just gonna just gonna go it's gonna go there we go that's better okay there we go because that's what i did every time i try to watch spider-man 3 but yeah simple as that everybody um that's it i feel pretty good with this list i'm gonna be honest like the placement of everything. Again, I think people are gonna give me um, some, actually, I'm gonna make one more change. I'm gonna put this over here. There you go. That's gonna make people absolutely lose their minds, but I don't really care. Um, if you can't tell, I like Spider-Man stuff. Um, I mean, we didn't really dip below B tier. Um, we didn't at all. And so, um, yeah. That's going to be it for this one. If y'all enjoy this kind of stuff, I'm happy to make more. Happy to drone on and on about comic book stuff. I'll do a few more for Comic Fest. Maybe even have some special guests. Keep an eye out for that. But, um, yeah. Hope you enjoy. Uh, be sure to tune in to Phantom Correspondence for more stuff. We got podcasts and videos and Twitch streams and jambalayas and all kinds of stuff. So y'all be safe. And be kind to each other.